Ahoy, Salty Dogs! My name is Lenscap, and welcome to Project Titan. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither will be our Titan. Today, we are going to work on a new ship uh, in our fleet. Um, now, I held a live stream earlier this week. Um, I want to try and do a live stream on Twitch um, at least once a week, and I also want to try and get a new uh, video in this series out once a week as well. I don't quite have an official schedule, um, but I will post an announcement video here on the YouTubes as well as an announcement in the Discord chat. Uh, there is a link in the description below to the Discord if you want to join up. Um, in our live stream, we talked about a couple of things. I'm going to start with this ship that we're in now. Um, this is a shuttle that I've rebuilt into like a cargo carrier. If you are, if you watched the episode zero for this series, then you should be at least remotely familiar with the ships in our fleet. Um, as long as I have been building sailing ships, ships with the solar sails, people have asked me to make the sails collapsible. So I tried that. I did it. We can actually collapse the sails here. Let me adjust the camera so that I can do that. Um, we can actually collapse the sails here. And uh, this actually is pretty cool. Uh, the ship, I feel like the ship holds its own without the sails, um, which is really good. I hadn't even considered that as an option before. Um, it accomplishes a couple of things. Um, I'm going to talk about that, and then I'm going to tell you why we're not going to do this <laughs> very much. Um, so it accomplishes a few things. First, it lets us look at our ships... Um, without the sails, which is interesting, but the ships are built to have the sails, so you probably won't see them without the sails very often. Um, from a utility standpoint, it is nice that we can fit these ships in hangars a little bit more easily. Um, but the sails are the big, like wow factor of this entire fleet and i feel like making them collapsible remove some of that um, and that's why we're probably not going to do the collapsible sales but i did want to do it just to try it and it's yeah it's a cool idea i think it might be able to be utilized elsewhere um just not here um another thing i don't really like about the collapsible sales is that the the glow from the force fields i used yellow force fields the glow is actually orange and not yellow, so the sails are the wrong color. Um, so that's a little bit weird. It it works out though, and I and I will probably continue to patch um, like battle damage with the force fields in the sails. I thought that was pretty cool, and we did that in our Star Squadron season uh, series last season. Okay, so in our live in our live stream uh, this week, we worked on this ship in front of us. Let's hop into it. And uh, we'll go into build mode and take a look at the ship. So basically what we did was we spawned in one of the shuttles, cut off the rear of it, and uh, kind of fitted this gun on the side. Um, this gun is like a Gatling gun kind of thing. So um, this was proof of concept, and this is probably what we're going to do with our... Uh... Isn't that cool? It spins! It's so cool! Anyway, this is probably what we're going to do with our live streams, at least at first, is kind of flesh out our ideas in the live stream and then put them into use in a video like we're doing today. So that brings us to today's video. We're going to build our fighter today. Um, this was proof of concept. Again, there are several things I liked about this. There are several things I didn't. And uh, we'll talk about all those things as we build the, the final... Uh, the next version of the fighter. You know, for me, the hardest part of starting a new ship is, like, the first couple of blocks. So, like, a actually starting the ship is the hardest part. So I'm thinking what we might do with our proof of concept, our POC that we did, we spawned in a shuttle and uh, basically deconstructed that to get our base. I might... I've been looking at this fighter that we already have and i might just use it as our base um several of the components we already were going to use anyway uh these rails for example this is the same kind of design as we used on our proof of concept 
So I think what we might just do is spawn one of these in and delete the gun and then build the different gun, uh, the Gatling gun style that we have over there. Um, we'll mirror it so it's on both sides. One one change that I'm going to have to make, obviously, if we have guns on both sides, we can't have the side open door like this. Um, I wanted to do a bottom door, but we might do a top door instead. That might even be, that would be even a little bit easier for us to do. Probably we'll do a rail door. Um, I'm, I'm thinking we'll do a rail door just because we should have enough space to do that. So that would be that would be way easier. I have on the um, on the proof of concept. We'll jump back over to it. I have a door that we built here, and it's it's pretty basic. It's a door on the bottom, but there's a ladder that extends out, so you can like climb up uh, from underneath. And I've got it set up with logic so that the ladder retracts, you know, and. And then the door closes on its own, and vice versa. The door opens and the letter goes out. Um, this is a cool concept, but really, we did this was the very first thing we did in the stream. There is an archive on Twitch if you want to go watch it. Um, but then I decided it would be cool to have these sails out like this. And that just, the ladder's not long enough. There's not enough clearance inside the ship itself for that to be a, a viable option. So we'll have to go with something else. And I'm thinking maybe a door from the top would make more sense. Uh, but So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spawn in another one of these, another Prowler class, and uh, chop it up, edit it a little bit, and I'll come back and do kind of progressive updates. So I've got our Prowler spawned in. I, uh, I removed the turrets on the top, and uh, we'll edit that in a second when we do the door. But I was looking at this, and I think we can use a lot more of this ship, actually, than, uh, than I'd planned before. Um, this whole gun bit, we can actually just take this off and put it on the other side and use the whole thing. Obviously, we'll have to change the sails because I like this idea for the sails. That's going to differentiate the two ships um, pretty well. But, but basically, from here over, we can just cut it and paste it over here. Oh, but you know what? There's not really a way to, like, paste a mirror of something not that i know of anyway we would almost have to rebuild it block by block with mirror on or something like that to get that to work which i mean i guess we could do it that way um that could work too but uh no matter how we do it i, I feel like if we can get at least you know like maybe from here back um on this side as well then that would give us enough like gun uh to put the barrels in for the gatling part and, uh, and that would differentiate the two ships well enough um i'm gonna work on trying to copy this over to the other side we're gonna start with that and and see if that's a direction that we can possibly take this build so this is actually gonna be easier than trying to rebuild the whole thing if this works the way i think it will then uh, all I should have to do is copy this and then delete it. And it looks like we're going to have to make our copy area slightly larger. So let's undo our delete. Uh, we need to make it one block taller. All right, so let's, let's try again. Let's copy our area and then delete this. Okay, now we've got symmetry on, so now we just need to paste. And we should have our gun. Yeah, there it is. All right, so now that we know where the gun is, I actually should have placed a, a pink block uh, where we want to paste it first. All right, so this should do it then. If I paste on top of this pink block right here... Fingers crossed, fellas. That should give us exactly what we want to happen. All right, so now let's turn off paste mode so Starmaid quits freaking out. Um, I did end up cutting a slice out of these, but that's an easy fix. And this gun looks complete, so it lined up pretty much perfectly. I think that's done it. I think that's exactly what we needed, and that gets us the shape we want. That was so easy. All right, so the next step of this process, then, uh, we're going to have to trim up this one, cut the sails off, cut the barrel off, and uh, then I think we'll go ahead and put in the the mechanism for the gun barrels. 
All right, all cleaned up, sail removed. I actually also pulled out all of the non-essential uh, systems from inside the ship, both in the guns and in the main body. Um, when I say non-essential, um, I mean non-essential to the look of the ship. <laughs> so things you can see from the outside I left um, because I, those are more like... They give us systems, which is nice, but they're more like uh, more of a stylistic choice than uh, than actually designed to give us systems. Um, so I cleaned it up a little bit. Now we're ready to add the gun barrels. This is where it gets interesting. Um, we got to do some docking and stuff. Um, this gun barrel, by the way, I think it looks cool with the red on there. It makes it kind of look like it's overheating, uh, which is something we talked a little bit about on the stream. Let me know what you guys think about that, though, because looking back on it the next day here, I don't know if I like the red as much. Like, maybe if it faded from, from here to here a little bit more, like, smoothly, it would be better. Like, if it's bright red at the end and not as red here at the, at the start, I might like that better. We'll have to play around with the lighting a little bit, but I, I think this is a cool concept. Um, all right, let's throw some guns on this sucker. So here are the guns. Uh, I think they look pretty sweet, honestly. Like it's it's pretty simple, um, but uh, but they they work pretty well. I did the kind of fading out of the of the like the heat on the barrels of the guns. I think that works pretty good. Um, yeah, I I like it. So I wanted to show you guys though how to make them spin because they do spin. Um, if you notice, the starboard gun spins faster than the port gun. Uh, the starboard gun obviously being the one closer to us. Um, and I wanted to show you how to do that because you will, if you try and do this yourself, you are going to run into a snag. So I wanted to help with that. Um, if we go into build mode, then we're right here inside here. I'll back up and show you. So we're right here inside the mechanism for this gun. And it's really, really simple. Um, let's go ahead and set it up on the other side, and I'll show you how to do it. So all we need are like two different kinds of blocks to do this. Um, to do it, you need a rail speed controller and an activation module. Make sure you turn the activation module on. So you link the rail speed controller to the activation module. That gives it like the fastest speed possible. Um, you can... If you don't know how rail speed controllers work, you can link them to several activation modules, and then they work off of a percentage of the activated modules, right? So if you have, like, this is quarter speed, this is half speed, this is three-quarter speed, and this is, like, maximum speed. So if you only have one module, that's 100%. So it's as fast as it'll go. So you can take this module and link it to the rail controller, and it'll make it spin quickly. And each time you hit the button, um, it spins around uh, as quickly as it can uh, a quarter turn. Now, right now, the way it's set up, it won't stay spinning because the rail spins faster than the button can reactivate it. So we need to we need to manipulate that a little bit. And the way to do that is if you take the rail and link that to several activation modules um, and turn those on, each of these is going to add another like stage to the to the way that it turns. This will allow the button to activate quickly enough. Um, if we remove a couple, we can kind of optimize this. Yeah, so we need at least three, and uh, I generally use four. Um, I just feel like it's more stable. But now if we if we fly out here, we'll notice they're both spinning in the same kind of speeds. Um, I've got them set up so they spin like counter each other, um, just because I think that looks cooler. Take a look. Let's look at it for a second. I think it's a pretty sweet mechanism, personally. And uh, definitely a great addition to our ship. All right, so the next thing we need are sails. So let's go ahead and put the sails on. And we have sails through the power of video magic. <laughs> I've uh, immediately put sails on this, though I promise there was no effort. Uh, I didn't make any mistakes at all. 
And uh, yeah, so those are all lies. Um, <laughs> but we have sales here, and I like them okay. I try to do something different with the sails on this ship and put them at a different, like, orientation. Um, so instead of being, like, tall and skinny, they're, like, long and skinny. Um, I think it works, actually, for this ship. I, I really like the profile from the side. It's pretty cool. Um, you still got the skull in the sail, so that works out. Uh, from the front, the sails look pretty good. Um, I like the weird angle like that. My favorite view of the ship right now is the top view. So I really dig that. Um, I, I've been talking to some people on the Discord. I showed them a picture of the ship so far, and uh, everybody seems to be in general consensus that it's cool, but it's missing something. Um, something needs to happen. And uh, people are saying a couple different things, um, that the sails seem like off balance, so to speak. So maybe we need, some people are suggesting a one big vertical sail on the top and the middle, uh, similar to basically any of these other ships, um, which could work. Um, in the live stream we did on our like proof of concept, um, we kind of had the same thing going on, and we added this smaller sail to the top, um, also at a 45. That might be what it needs as well. That feels a little bit more Star Wars-y, um, which is fine. I got no problems with that. Um, so that might be what it needs as well. Um, currently, so my problem with both of those ideas at the moment, um, and we're going to try them both out and see what they look like, but my problem with those ideas is that currently I have the way the ship docks is from the top like this. So it like latches on, you know, to the bottom of whatever carries it. And if we put sails, either of those options, that's not possible um, any longer. So what I'm thinking we might do is this, but we'll make it so that sail can rotate to a horizontal. And uh, that way it'll still be able to dock. I think I can pull that off uh, with some pretty simple logic. Let's try it. Okay, I wanted to try the vertical sail idea first because that's just going to be significantly easier um, to make happen and, and take a look at. Um, I hopped on over to the shuttle over there, copied its sail. You can see my little pink block that I used to copy um, and made a template. Um, all right, so let's paste. I called this sail one. And uh, let's paste it in and just see how it looks. I mean, it's not going to paste perfectly, um, but we can kind of use this to get an idea. And if we like it, we'll refine the paste job a little bit better. Um, but we can use this to kind of get an idea of balance. I don't think that's right. I can tell you already I don't like it. Yeah, that's definitely not the way we want to go with that. Like, it's... It was a cool idea, but I, I don't think it fits. Um, let's try the the sails at an angle. Um, and then if we like that, maybe we can logic it up so that they fold flat. I think that would actually be a pretty cool mechanism. Um, I really like to have logic on my ships, so that could be pretty neat. Cool, so I, I this is a few like revisions of this later, so don't think this was the first thing I tried. But... Um, I really dig these sails now, and uh, they're kind of messy, they're not refined, but they're in place, and uh, and so is the mechanism for them. So if we zoom out, I think I've got it on three right now, and then we hit the button. Yeah, they fold down flat, and they fold up. Easy peasy. There's a click detection, so you can hear if I'm clicking quickly, so you can't break it you can hear me clicking yeah so you can't break it by clicking too fast um which is very useful um i've also got it wired in such a way oh we're flying the ship that's not what i wanted to do <laughs> uh i've also got it wired in such a way that uh when you either dock or undock um with this docker at the top it changes the states of the sails 
So it should be automatic. You should never have to manually adjust the sails. But the option is there if you need to, if they get out of sync or for some reason they don't change properly. Um, we can quickly take a look at the logic here, although it's kind of a mess and uh, not very eloquent. Um, but basically there's this line and an activation module here. These are the state change functions. Um, so this is actually pretty simple. This is a docker into an activation module. The activation module goes into a knot and a button, and the knot also goes into a button, and then both of these buttons go into an OR. Um, that way the OR outputs a pulse on a state change. So if that was over your head, maybe I'll do a tutorial on it, but tutorials aren't really my thing, so I'll let somebody else make that video and explain this mechanism a little better. Um, anyway, uh, that <clears throat> that state change links into an OR as well as your manual button press, and uh, that's how you can do the manual override thing. Um, from there, it's super simple. You just switch between two rotator blocks, clockwise or counterclockwise, um, with a button, and uh, I've got one of these on either side, so that the sails can twist on their own. Um, but yeah, what that gets you is this. So it's a lot of logic. I guess a lot. It's not much logic for a pretty simple thing. But it's got some fail saves and some extra features checked in uh, to it as well, which I appreciate. Um, okay, so I think all we really have left is to refine these sails. Sails get them a shape we like and then throw systems in it. Hopefully by the end of this episode, we can watch this bad boy fly around. All right, uh, the moment you've all been waiting for, uh, I, I guess. Well, yeah, if you've made it this far in the video, you've probably been waiting for this. Uh, the shift class is finished. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. She's pretty basic, uh, honestly. There's not a lot to this ship. Well, other than that, she looks freaking sweet. Um... So we've got Gatling guns, uh, we've got some shields, we've got some sails. Uh, she looks cool, she's pretty fast. Um, what else can we say? I'm not sure what else to say. I haven't done a combat test yet, I think we'll save that for probably our next live stream that we do. Um, so if you are interested in seeing the Shiv class in action, twitch.tv slash lenscap. I'll make sure I put an announcement video on the YouTube channel when I go live uh, for that. So let's take a look at some stats. Uh, if we if we do, um, if we look on the left, we can see a mass of eight hundred forty seven point nine. So call it eight fifty. Um, with rails nine oh nine. So call it nine hundred. Um, forty six meters long. Forty one meters wide. Um, she has no extra battery, but regens power twice as quickly as she can use it. Um, thrust to mass is 1.8. This is the most maneuverable ship I think I've ever made. Um, 42,000 shields, regening at about 3,000 a second. Um, it roughly takes about 12, 15 seconds to fill her shields back up, so maybe could tweak that a little bit, but uh, the idea is she's quick, so she doesn't need as much shields. Um, that's the idea anyway. As far as execution, I don't know how that's really going to work. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say, really. The uh, the the Gatling gun is pretty sweet. Um, you can see it actually fires out of the ship, but it... I mean, it works. It's shooting as if it's shooting out of the, <laughs> out of the guns. Um, she can fly and fire all at the same time. Um... Oh, the entrance, I didn't show you guys how to get in and out yet. Um, I just did a really simple rail door on the bottom, so uh, I don't have a button for this, like an inner ship remote for this. But if you fly in... Oh, I need to label these as well. But if you fly in, this is the, the ramp. It basically just lowers a ramp from the bottom. Um, I think that works out okay. It's not quite big enough to be really functional anywhere because the sails are so large and in the way. Um, but that's cool. That's basically the, the way you get in and out of this ship. Um, I mean, mostly this is going to be a drone fighter, to be honest. It's not a huge, like, 
You're not going to fly around in the ship as your main ship. Maybe you are. Maybe you really like it. Um, but the idea is uh, is that it's a drone fighter. Um, so we can spin up the guns. We can stop the guns. Um, we can lower and raise the sails. And uh, I didn't test the docking mechanism, but in theory, when you dock or undock the ship, it also toggles the flapping sails like that. Um, oh, here's a thing I need your input on. You see how the grates make this square if we're far away um, from them? I know that that is a graphical thing supposed to make the game run smoother, but I don't have any problems with that. If you know how to increase the distance on that, I want to know. I want to be able to increase that. So let me know. Is it a config file thing? Um, is it a thing in my settings? I haven't found anything, but if you know, let me know in the comments. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate uh, all the love and support that I've gotten on this series so far. Um, this is episode one, <laughs> so um, if you're interested in more lens caps, subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's a Discord you can join as well, and uh, again, I'll be trying to stream on Twitch uh, pretty frequently also. So until next time, guys, stay tuned.